everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Cuban Star, an arbitrary love story. Not Cuban Star, this is not about Fidel Castro or uh, another famous Cuban person. I'm sure they exist, it's a country full of illustrious and wonderful people. Um, it's an experimental game that just came out on Steam, and I say experimental kind of to cover my own ass here. I'm gonna let this fitter, happy, fitter, happier thing play over the top while I uh, kind of just relax. Let all the stars I knew the memory of one star haunts me. At the time, I found its subtle rhythms to be quirky, and the reflection of my faces in its facets to be beautiful. But inevitably, it became repetitive. And I left to hop across the world. Now, I grow brittle and large, so heavy that the earth itself can no longer bear my bounding. And I sit here and reflect. And regret. But you don't want to hear the tired groaning of an old cube. I'll leave you instead with some advice. Fill your heart with joy. Do no harm, and leave the world a more colorful place than when you entered it. Beautiful. So that is uh, basically the impetus and the start of the story of what we've got going on in Cube and Star, an arbitrary love story. We are playing as a cube here, uh, and we kind of roll around throughout the environment. Uh, like I said, I called it an experimental game. It's a, an apt description, I would say. But additionally, it's kind of my own way of covering my own ass, because despite playing uh, roughly an hour of this so far, I still almost have no idea what I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, or whether or not there is something that I'm supposed to be doing. But that's not to say that, uh, you know, it's not fun regardless. But I'll do my best to explain what the hell is going on here, and uh, as I understand it at least, and then you can draw your own conclusions. So we're a cube. Um, collecting resources is one of the things that you can do. There are stars that fall, and we collect those, and there are other objects we'll uncover, and we'll get those. But it seems like the major focus is to... Um, Basically, get yourself a color, and you get that by knocking into trees and picking up these cubes. So I'll pick up this green cube here. That will turn me green, uh, and as a result of uh, leaving home there, which is that kind of like birth cube there, uh, I can start making my way in the world today, and maybe we'll be able to spread some color throughout the world. I believe it's even one of the taglines of the game. It's like, yeah, it's spread color throughout the world, spread joy. And apart from that, I'm just kind of you know, working my way through the game and seeing what happens. There's all sorts of surprises that come up. I have never seen these creatures before. What do you have going on? Passionate Lofty Stepper, speaking in some kind of code. The way I take the game is, um, let me just pick up the, uh, whatever object we have here. Searching for meaning, but coming up empty, you discover a lucrative gem of pointed inclinations. We'll get all sorts of, uh, you know, kind of platitudes like that as we continue to find artifacts throughout the game. The way I've seen the game so far, and the way that I think it is kind of intended to be interpreted, but it's it, one of the major strengths of the game is that it is open to interpretation, so maybe this is just my interpretation, is that it's kind of like a, a metaphor for the courtship process, I feel. Like, we're going out here and we're, like, gathering resources and meeting people and trying to, I don't know, find someone that we really connect with. And, you know, when we get a color, let me see if I can actually get um, a color that is not the same as the one I currently have. There's a day-night cycle, as you can see. Um, that is the same color we currently have. Let's go over here where there's a little bit more uh, uh, color, and we'll take this purple one. Uh, when we get color, we spread it, but as we kind of continue going onwards, it's like a paintbrush that hasn't been dipped in the bucket in a while, you know? Like, we start to lose, um, you know, the amount or the strength of the, the hue that we're kind of putting down, uh, so we need to refill ourselves. So, basically, the way that I have kind of played the game so far uh, by myself is just kind of walking around, picking up as many colors as I possibly can, and just kind of bumping into things, and occasionally I, I get a Steam achievement, and uh, occasionally I think about what my life and the way I people, or I think about my life, I should say, and, and you know, how I treat the people around me. Now, again, this is, I should say right off the top, whenever I cover experimental or, you know, quote-unquote arty games like this, uh, I try to cover right off the top that, you know, this is a game that not absolutely everybody is going to be into, and you know, for the most part, these aren't really my kinds of games either, even though I've played a lot of them, a lot of them over the past couple of years. Uh, I'm starting to grow an appreciation for it. You know, the first time anyone looks at a painting, they never know, you know, really what to, what to think about it um, beyond, you know, the artistic skill of the artist. But as time goes on, you develop kind of a taste and, you know, become, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a connoisseur, but you develop an appreciation for games that don't necessarily spoon feed you exactly what you're supposed to do. So I'm okay wandering around, uh, you know, for a couple hours and not really being 100% sure of what's going on, even if it's not necessarily my genre of choice. 
Now what we can do, uh, beyond just mindlessly meandering here, is maybe make our way over to that big star that you can see over in the, I guess that would be like the southwest kind of quadrant of the map there. So we're just gonna go this way first because the map will eventually uh, kind of fold over itself and there's also a token over here and I'm gonna see if I can get this. We can bump into these people, we can meet a six-faced comrade. To the south my skin prickled with anxiety. I'm not totally sure what that means. Um, from an atmosphere standpoint, this game actually reminds me a little bit of uh, Continue 987654321. Uh, in the way that it's kind of um, obtuse, if that makes sense, or abstract. So again, we got a quote-unquote achievement there for uh, beginning our road towards trivial wealth. And that's why I kind of get the feeling that this is uh, a bit of a metaphor for, you know, you know, life in your, not necessarily exclusively your 20s, but it, uh, that's what I relate to right now. You know, gathering resources, meeting people, and trying to figure out, uh, you know, trying to build a foundation for what your life is going to be in the future. Now, let's see what this thing is. This will probably give us another achievement that I've already unlocked as well. Movement to passion. We get fiery passion. This might actually give us an ability. I would burn the world to charcoal for one second of satisfaction. Press F to vent your frustration. That would be on the keyboard, I guess. Oh, okay, so we can burn the whole world if we want to. Uh, I have actually never seen that before. I wonder what that is on the 360 controller. Because that's what I've been using here, because that's what it tells me to use. Um, maybe I will use the keyboard for that stuff. Oh, what is this thing over here? I have killed that. Got some kind of weird little apple monster. Uh, I don't know what that is. Let's press F and see if we can burn it and see what happens. Oh, maybe we only get one of those. Okay, I understand. Interesting. Uh, again, I have no idea what to make of that. But, you know, what just happened, happened. We are no closer towards actually getting down to that area. But that's A-OK. -okay. Maybe it's got a cooldown timer or something. I don't know. Because it's still up there in the, like, middle right of the screen. But I cannot access it. So let's make our way down to that star. Uh, at least we'll get some more dialogue when we go down there. As for, like, how I actually feel about Cuban star so far, Cube and star, I feel the need to articulate that greatly. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that not that many people will be into. I've been, you know, pretty confused throughout my experience with it so far. Some of the things that come up are, are thought-provoking, and I think, you know, visually it looks fine, and uh, particularly from, like, a sound effects and soundtrack level. It's got some good things going for it. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily something that I would play in my leisure time, and that's not just like a, oh, I wish we could go back to, you know, games being about fun all the time type thing, but um, it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know if it necessarily gets its message across to me. I might be misinterpreting it, uh, but that's kind of where I've, I've come to be so far. But it is relatively fun, just even in its moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, if you're uh, open and receptive to the kind of game that this is, which, you know, let's be honest, is certainly a, a niche kind of thing. You pocket a regular salary check. You feel valuable, dominant. Uh, that is a, a theme of what goes on in the game is basically... Oh, did I kill that thing? Oh, I didn't mean to do that! That's okay. That thing seems kind of mad at me, but... Um, it's a theme of what's going on in the game. It's like, oh, these meaningless trinkets that we fill our lives with, etc., etc. Um, so I can really, like, destroy a lot of the environment around me. We can also pick up gems, like uh, Crash Bandicoot-style jewels that we find in the environment around us. Let's pick this up. We're gonna fight uh, Neo Cortex next. From the turbulent depths, you recover a sapphire. Collect a precious, delicious gem. Voila! All right, so we just need to go a little bit more to the east and then downwards a little bit. But there's another thing here. We get a vine spawned token. Vine spawned token that somehow justifies our bouncing. Again, you know that's uh, it. It comes on a little thick with that, but maybe that's a good thing. It says like, you know. Dude, what if money didn't exist? Like, why do we waste our time, you know? I don't know, maybe I'm projecting on the game. I should say that in order to be fair, but, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the vibe that I get from it. And again, this is a work that's open to interpretation. Oh, we got something else here. Uh, that is part of our history, I think. Yeah, new history entry added to collection. And basically, this sums up the experience that I have had with the game so far. Uh, it's a lot about being experimental. It's a lot about uh, wandering around and trying to figure out the rules that exist uh, in this space and trying to derive meaning from something that is very minimalistic and doesn't necessarily tell you uh, exactly what you should be doing at all times. And again, a lot of people are not going to be into that. Some people are going to be totally okay with it. As on the spectrum of like, I think we got an item there. Nope. On the spectrum of uh, games as art, like is this Super Mario Brothers, where it's very easy to figure out what's going on, or is this, uh, you know, like Biento Lete, the weird abstract uh, French impressionist chess game that I, I played last year? Uh, it, it's definitely further on that, you know, like Biento Lete side. So, you know, this is not necessarily entry level uh, games as art or entry level experimental games. Uh, it, it's 
definitely a game that's going to require some patience and, and some tolerance and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, basically some tolerance for knowing... Oh, we can keep moving while this is on fire, okay. Um, some tolerance for not knowing exactly what you're doing, and some people uh, enjoy that, some people don't. How close are we to getting to the star here? We'll get a little bit closer. Uh, I, again, as far as I understand it, or at least from what I've discovered so far, um, the object of the game is just to spread as much color to the world as possible, but that uh, takes a long time. In the hour or so that I played with the game, because I was intrigued with it, uh, I only spread color to like 12% of the world. I'm not going to necessarily say it's an eight hour long experience, but I'm just going to say that's, you know, how I did when I was playing it. I do believe there is a way to like, have a deeper interaction with these things that kind of float around here. Uh, I remember a blazing heat that cleansed the world. Uh, those those guys are called stalkers. I don't necessarily know uh, what that means, but anyway. Uh, there's also other objectives that we can see if I just go to my uh, journal here. So we can see, you know, we've gotten a lot of these. We also need to stumble upon a diary entry though. Resurrect the tiny things and murder the tiny things. Find the ancient star. Give the world a healthy splash of color. These are things we still have to go on. So, you know, as much as I've talked about not knowing what you're supposed to do in the game, the fact that there's a journal at least gives you a little bit of guidance that helps you out a little bit. Um, I'm just going to look at the map again. We should find a diary entry at some point. Oh, we just need to go to the uh, east now. So I'm just going to keep spreading some color throughout the world. Our percentage is 6.02. I don't know if there's a right color and a wrong color. Like, that's still something that I'm working on here. Again, it's, it's a weird game to kind of come at from a critical standpoint because I know that there's going to be some people that uh, are going to watch this and completely write it off and I know there's going to be some people that watch this and say, you know, hey, that looks kind of cool. Like, uh, I, I worry that I'm not doing a very good job explaining what's actually happening here, but I also think that that's kind of the uh, the point of what goes on. Again, I should stress that it's not really my cup of tea and in terms of, uh, you know, other games that kind of aim for the same thing, I necessarily or I, I may actually uh, have a, a stronger affinity for, but it's been an interesting time with the game so far, at least. So we've got movement or monument to joy here. In all situations, a morsel of pleasure, I am joy. Okay. Press X to leak contentment. Oh, it actually tells you um, what you're supposed to do or what button to hit down there. So let's let's not hit Y yet. Let's try to hit it when we come over to this area over here, uh, and we talk to the grandfather star. The ancient star speaks! Hello, little, Hello, one. little one. I have, been, I have been here for a long time and I have I not seen sorry. anything that would entice me to move. I am sorry. What if we spread contentment everywhere? That didn't do anything. But what is... Where did that thing go? I don't understand. Did that just spread itself out throughout the world now? Maybe I should go looking for that. Hmm. I don't actually know. What if we try to light the ancient star on fire though? Maybe that would do something for me. I'm really trying to resurrect the tiny things, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, okay, yes, I know the ancient star speaks. What if we burn it? It gets kind of salty about the whole thing. Uh, but it just says the same thing again and again. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna make some more moves here. I'm gonna try to get some, you know, momentum and, and color back here. But uh, this is basically my impressions on Cuban Star so far. Uh, this is a game that I think is, uh, it, it appeals to a niche audience. And yes, that's me being polite and, and tactful, but it is also my honest opinion, is that, you know, these games, when I, when I play like a game like Our Darker Purpose, and I don't mean to bring the Our Darker Purpose thing up again, but it's just, it's a good example, I think, to, to draw from here. When I play a game like that, I'm really confident being kind of incisive with my criticism because I know that genre really well. I, I feel like I can be trusted as like a, a source of reliable information and criticism when it comes to that genre, whereas in something like this, this is almost more of a showcase video to be like, this game's out, if it looks like the kind of thing that you'd be into, go check it out. It's basically the same kind of pseudo Kid Gloves treatment that I used for uh, Continue 987654321, and not a lot of uh, other, you know, quote unquote reviewers on, on YouTube or online take the same approach. Uh, they kind of maybe would write it off if it's not necessarily, <clears throat> pardon me, not necessarily their kind of thing, but uh, I don't know. I find that a little unfair that just because the game's not necessarily part of my wheelhouse, then I, I'm gonna hold it against it. But, so be it. Uh, we're gonna break open some more gems here. And don't bump into me, dude. I am seriously like farming some diamonds over here and I'm gonna build a railroad and it's gonna be great. Why don't we just spread contentment? Yeah, see, like, what is that? I, I spread contentment and uh, then one of those like glyphs popped up, uh, but I don't, I don't know where it went. That pyramid, by the way, is just one of those stalkers we ran into earlier. Uh, 
I guess the, what I wanted to say, and I, I apologize that I kind of buried the lead here, but I wanted to say that this is as much like an art game as it is a mystery game, and a lot of games that are artistic are experimental, sorry, artistic or experimental, are kind of mystery games. You know, we're a detective in this world, and we're trying to figure out the rule set from which, like, value is derived, basically, or success is derived. Uh, and, and honestly, I still have no idea. But uh, if, if you're able to figure it out, let me know. Spoil the mystery for me, uh, because I am actually interested. And that's why, you know, uh, with a lot of these games, I, I play them for like an hour. And by the end of that hour, doing my like pseudo due diligence for a video like this, I'm like, wow, I'm really sick of that. Can't wait to get the video out of the way. With this, I was more like, I wouldn't necessarily say I was like sad that the hour was coming to an end, but I was more like, I wish I had figured out what, what the draw is before. Because I, I feel like hidden somewhere in here uh, is like something really neat. And uh, I'm, I'm just missing it and I, I haven't discovered it yet. But again, that's a okay. Uh, Pretty much, if this video went on twice as long, I would just be meandering, probably, basically aimlessly, aimlessly as well. I don't really see anything on my map that I should be looking for, so I have no idea. This is, uh, th that's a pretty good place to end off uh, my let's look at of Cuban Star, uh, an arbitrary love story. I kind of don't know what's going on. It's kind of neat. A lot of people are not going to have a tolerance for this kind of game. That's okay. I can light things on fire occasionally. Um, I, I feel like once we get more of these powers, this is going to be like what we're going to want to experiment with and figure out um, what's going on. See, like there, I, I hit the button again, but then when I move, the glyph runs away from me. I don't know, maybe I've just got to be content standing where I am. Uh, what is it? Okay, it's another ladybug thing. Oh, I burned it! Did I get an achievement? No, I didn't. Oh, well. Uh, in any case, uh, yeah, hopefully you at least have some kind of idea what this game's about now if you've uh, found it on the Steam store page. Uh, you know, you gotta figure it out for yourself, basically. I, I can only show you the way. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna pick up the game on Steam, I would encourage you to do so. There is a link in the video description below. It's 10 bucks on Steam, uh, eight bucks for its opening week sale, uh, if that's still going on by the time this video goes up. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to show your support by clicking the like button. It does help out a great deal. And subscribe if you wanna see more first impressions like this in the future. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.